Hey everybody, welcome back to the Global Geula Summit, www.globalgeulasummit.com. I'm here with Dror Kasudo. I see from the comments that people are very eager to listen to him and to our conversation today. But before I officially introduce him, I just want to take a moment uh, just to invite everybody to connect. So once again, it's really important to be where we are in order to receive and learn something new. One of the big advantages of our times is massive amount of information from and access to information from all different directions. And one of the big disadvantages is that we have constant flood of information and distractions from all different directions. So let's just take a moment of connection and prayer. And close your eyes or not, as you choose. And just we'll, we'll make it silent this time. So whatever you have going on, just bring it into this place, this this virtual time and space. And let's invite God to be in here with us. Not that God isn't always here with us, but doing that consciously helps us also be here. And just the prayer that everybody receives, shifts, lets go of whatever it is that, that needs to be moved around. So with that, I am excited to introduce to you Rav Dror Moshe Kasuto. He was born in Jerusalem to a secular family. After high school and a bit of work traveling, he was drafted into the Israeli army, where he met his wife, Enav. Contrary to what you might expect, the experience in the army was what began to open the eyes of Rav Dror and fuel what would become a, lo- a lifelong search for a deeper truth. There he came in contact with many new people who had very different outlooks on life from what he was used to and different outlooks on the world. So he began to develop a deeper awareness of his own feelings and to talk to people, to ask questions, to ask questions of God as well, questions about life, just to experience deeper interactions with people. And slowly he came to see that there was a a kind of an invisible hand surrounding these interactions, quietly supplying explanations for everything that he was wondering about. This realization that was, that there was some unseen force guiding him and surrounding him was both very new to him and incredibly powerful and inspiring. At this point, Rav Dror realized that there, there was a creator running the world. At first, he decided to try to connect to the creator simply through praying and talking, but eventually he also began to become more educated in the Torah and in Judaism and started to walk that path, beginning to keep the laws of the Torah through practice and also through deeper, higher study. Today, Rav Dror lives with his family in Muncie, New York, which is just a 45 minute drive from where I lived before I made Aliyah, Morristown, New Jersey. And he travels across North America to teach and to meet with his students. His approach is one of joy and love and deep compassion for all human beings. I actually first found him on Facebook. I don't remember how or when, but um, you know, I heard, his, I heard the things that he was saying and the, the, the heart with which he was saying them, and it's, it's so needed in our times. This, we need a lot of healing, and our spirituality and our relationship with the Creator and with ourselves also needs a lot of healing, and that's part of what Gila is here to facilitate. Rav Dura's all several books, recorded CDs for children, and released an inspirational rap album, which I wish we could demo on this call, but we didn't plan that. In addition to in-person work, he's the founder of, founder of the online site, Amuna, the online Amuna Center, amuna.com, I believe, where his many classes are hosted and even sometimes translated into different languages. He also has a very widespread presence on YouTube, Facebook, and other social media platforms. So that's Rob Dror in a nutshell. And with that, I want to welcome you to the Global Kiwi Summit. And thanks so much for being with us today to share. Thank you so much. This is a great opportunity for me, for us as well, in the in every way that the Creator brings people to work together and to cooperate and to and to share the treasures that they've been blessed with is a, is a great opportunity and, uh, and it's a merit. It's true and it's a sign of the times, right? It's a sign of the future. One of the signs of redemption is moving from competition to cooperation and from from each of us being in our own singular world to actually creating greater opportunities and greater um, like well, you could almost say a higher order organism by, by connecting with each other on behalf of some higher goal. It's very special. It's very special that we can do it and that this technology exists. 
I know I don't have to tell you about that because you're out there. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, you know there there are some hard questions even when you try to 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 be positive and to and to increase awareness and you want to cheer up everyone and. But you know, a redemption, a geula, and salvation is something that people are hoping for and waiting for for more than 2,000 years. It's like, we're not, oh, we're the last generation. The people that the temple destro been destroyed in their days thought that it will be rebuilt in their days as well. Like, are, is the redemption really coming? Like, I want to, I want to... I want to. Start, I want to. I want to open with a challenge. You know, it's like it's true that we do believe that we are the last generation, and that we do see many improvements, and that we do see many um, opportunities, and we are using the social media, a tool that is beautiful that never existed before, and we're reaching out to millions, millions of people with no doubt, but. How can we know that really the redemption is coming in our days and that we're not just like hoping for it and going to be disappointed? Do we know it? Very good question. So, let me ask you, how do we know that the redemption is coming in our days <laughs> and we're not going to be disappointed? Let's hear what you have to say. Okay, so I have a very, very good question about it. And I'll tell you, as long as the person um, is not sure who he is, and where he's holding while trying to serve Hashem, trying to serve the Creator, trying to do certain things, as long as he is not really connected to himself, so he can never know, can never be sure um, that he will be answered and that the salvation will take place in his life. Like many people were standing and praying and many people been disappointed and, and died in, in agony while hoping for a salvation to come. With no doubt they were honest people, they were truthful people. And the question is very, very hard to deal with. It's a deep question. But when the person he's honest and he believes in himself means that he knows himself, he is aware to himself, he is connected to himself and he knows exactly why is he praying for the salvation and for the redemption and when he recognized the hand of the divine supervision of the creator on him in his life he understands the messages that are coming from above and he can relate them to the real source of his request it means he can understand if he was really being answered in his prayers or that it was another reaction or another thing that happened in his life with no connection to his prayer so when a person is honest and really truthful then he can be sure that the answers that he's receiving from heaven are representing the truth but when the person is still doubting himself and he's not sure so even if he sees positive things taking place in his life he can never know for sure if those things relate to his request and they are presenting his salvation or not. So I'm taking a leap here, but you can tell me if, if I'm understanding you correctly or not. What I hear you saying is that part of the process of redemption, I think I hear you saying, part of the process of redemption is that everything needs to become very real. So it's not just a hope or a wish that's sort of outside of us, but it's a going deep inside being true and real with what's happening, being true and real in our connection with God, and then watching our life unfold based on that. Because we can so, see, yes, in 100%, because we can see that you have very large, very radical, very strong um, and strict Orthodox communities that are just getting stronger and stronger and richer and richer and larger and larger and they think that they are about uh, to see redemption like they're claiming to they can say we opened many new Batei Midrashot and hundreds of thousands are sitting and learning Torah is it a real evident that the redemption is about to come? I'm not sure that it is when a person is not 100% honest and truthful he can made up, make up a lot, a lot of, of, of um, uh, of visions, of hopes, 
of desires that will not really represent the will of heaven, will not really show what the Creator is about to do. The Creator is revealing His will only to real, humble and righteous people. The complete heavenly will is not something that everyone in the street can see and recognize as of now. Only in time of redemption, the real knowledge and understanding of the Creator will be revealed to all. But until then, the prophecy and the inner wisdom of the righteous ones been given and is being given only to those ones who committed themselves to the Creator with no doubt in a complete way with 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 um, with no doubts in themselves, like threw themselves completely into the water like Nachshon ben Aminadav. Maybe you should just bri briefly recap that story because I don't think everybody knows who Nachshon was. So I, yesterday night when, um, when I was praying and thinking about our event today, so I was thinking about presenting three points of redemption in our today's class. And I wanted to share those three points, and I'm very happy that you asked me to, to tell about this story. So, when the nation of Israel came out of Egypt, they were standing in front of a very difficult situation. They were facing the Red Sea, and from, so, in front of them, they're stuck in front of the sea. No one ever crossed the sea, and they didn't have boats or a yacht or, or a bridge. And to, to cross the sea. From both of the sides there were predators. The ancient script, scripts, the Midrashim, are telling that from one side there were bears and from the other side there were hungry lions that were about to attack them. So they couldn't run to the right, they couldn't run to the left. And when they were about to turn back because they had to do something with themselves, they saw the Egyptians, warriors, soldiers, coming, being led by Pharaoh, to kill them. And they were stuck in the middle of the desert. Now, we all know that the redemption took place in that form, that the sea been opened, and Am Israel, the nation of Israel, crossed the Red Sea in dry land. So that was the miracle, that was the salvation. Now there are three righteous people that by their merit, the ancient scripts are describing the redemption took place, telling that it took place by their merit. One of them is Yosef, the righteous man, Yosef HaTzadik, that it's written on him, Hayam Ra'av Vayanos. The, the sea saw the bed of Yosef. Yosef made Am Israel take an oath to promise to him that they will carry his body to the Holy Land to bury him in Shechem. And Moses... Joseph, jo Yosef, Yosef is Joseph. Yosef, Joseph, Yosef Atzadik. And when Joseph, when, and when Moses and all of Am Israel, when Am Israel packed their stuff and took their things, so Moses went to bring out the bed of Joseph and to take him and to carry him to the promised land to keep his word. And the verse is saying, Hayam Ra'av the sea saw, the fact that the merit of Joseph, that he was running away from the wife of Potiphar, that he was a holy man that was humble and righteous and pure, and because of his great merit, the sea ran away from him. The sea been opened by the merit of Joseph. That's one righteous man, that's one um, form, one reason that the sea been opened. The second person, the second way, was by the merit of Moses, like the verse is saying, Boke ayam lifne Moshe, that the Creator opened the sea for Moses, in front of Moses, by the merit of Moses. Moses was the man of God, and he was standing on the side of the mountain when the nation of Israel were stuck in that situation, lost and confused in the desert. And then he was praying to the Creator and asked for salvation. And Hashem, the Creator, told him, Mati Why are you calling me again? Daber el b'nei Israel ve'isau. Tell the nation of Israel to start walking. And, and by that merit, the sea been opened 
to Moses. And the third person that the redemption took place by his merit was Nachshon ben Aminadav. Nachshon ben Aminadav was Nasi, the prince of the tribe of Yehuda. He was one of the people that were stuck inside the camp waiting for a salvation to come. And the Midrash is saying to us, the Talmud is saying to us that when Am Israel were lost and confused and didn't know what to do and were trying to figure out how the salvation will take place, Nachshon ben Aminadav jumped into the water and with his sandals and with his backpack and his belt and pants and shirt and everything he held on himself, his smartphone that I'm mentioning every time, he just jumped into the water and started walking into the sea. And only when the water covered his throat, his mouth, and he started coughing and choking from the water that he's swollen, then the sea been opened by his merit. Those are the three righteous people that by their merit the sea been opened. Now, they are representing for each and every one of us the potential redemption in our days. One can be by the merit of that righteous man that we believe in him, that we follow him. For an example, if a person, he is a Chabadnik, he follows the Lubavitch Rebbe. So that is the righteous man that is in the aspect of Joseph. Because it's a righteous man that already passed away and he believes that he is still alive in his heart, in his faith. The merit of Joseph is standing for good. And like the Zohar is saying, that righteous people, even when they're dead, they are still alive. Tzadikim bemotam kruim chaim, they are still alive. And by the merit of that righteous person that died, that passed away, by his merit the sea will be open. Many times a person can go and by Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev's merit, by the merit of the ancestors, by the merit of the Baba Sali, the Lubavitch Rabbi, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, every one of those righteous people that he believes in their holiness, by their merit he will see wonders. It's a way to be redeemed. The sea will be open for you in that way. The second one is Moses. Moses is representing a live righteous leader. A rabbi or someone like that, a mentor, that you follow his advice and he's the one that you approach with hard questions and he answers you and he will give you a solution in a critical time. That you go to Moses and you ask him a question, you go to your teacher, to your rabbi, it can be even a friend, it doesn't matter. It's a live person that is wiser than you, that you're counting on him and by his merit you can be redeemed. The sea will be open for you. The third option is Nachshon ben Aminadav. That takes place in the life of every person five minutes before Shabbat enters when no one gonna answer your phone and no one can help you and you don't have a clue what to do with your life and you're stuck in a situation and you need to find a solution for your problems on your own. You went to Uman and you cried on the grave of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. You went to the Ohel and you cried for days over there for salvation and it didn't came. And you called your rabbi 2,000 times and he told you, I don't know what to do for you anymore. And, and, and you are stuck with your problem. By your merit, the redemption can take place. Now the most interesting and beautiful thing here is that when Moses stood and prayed to the Creator to answer and to bring the salvation, the Creator answered him in a very interesting way. The Creator told him, Matitz Akelai, why are you calling me? Words of the Creator to Moses. The Creator fixed Moses and told him, it's not the time to pray right now. Now is the time to make an act, to act. And that was exactly what Nachshon ben Aminadav did. So it comes to an end that Nachshon ben Aminadav is the highest aspect of them all. Because physically, with our eyes, we saw that the sea been opened just for him. 
When he jumped into the water, the salvation started from him. We believe that it was by the merit of Joseph, because the verse is testifying on that. We believe that it happened by the merit of Moses, because the verses are saying that. But with our eyes, we saw that Nachshon ben Aminadav brought the salvation. When he jumped with his sneakers into the water and started walking into his darkness, into, the, into his own death, into his own despair because think about that situation in every step that he made into the water it seemed to him like the salvation is getting away from him every step that he made into the sea and water became um, higher and higher he had more evidence in his mind that it's not about to come that it will not happen and only when he decided to continue, he actually went toward the salvation that was about to come, but have not been seen. No one could see that. His wife was terrified. His children were screaming on the shore. His friends thought he was a lunatic and lost his mind. But he decided to continue. And he went deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and facing harder and harder challenges with no end. And that is our situation today. This is where we are standing in front of the redemption in our days. The darkness is getting heavier and the challenges and the difficulties are getting harder and harder and people are losing their faith in hundreds and in thousands and in millions and you see people that were religious for generations that are losing their religion and their connection in our days and you see people that were so committed to do tshuva and were baalet tshuva for years and did wonderful things and suddenly after 10 and 20 years their house is being broken and you see horrible things around you, things that can evident that there is no salvation in the, horizon, in, the, in the horizon, that you cannot see no salvation coming. But the darkest hour is the hour before dawn. And only those ones that are walking in darkness and does not giving up and not backing off they will see the light. Like the verse is saying, the ones who went in darkness, who walks in darkness, they saw a huge light. So we need to determine our heart to dedicate our, our effort and all of our mind and heart into bringing the redemption no matter what it takes from us by the merit of the righteous ones that we believe in, but to bring it and to do it and activate it ourselves. It's really powerful, actually, the idea that we that everything has been brought down to earth through God and through the tzaddikim in these times, and now it's up to us to actually reach out and connect to it in a very real way. There is an amazing story about okay. it. You, you want to ask something? You rather? Well, go ahead and tell. No, let's hear it. Let's so. go with this flow. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. Um, told the story once that there was a king that wanted to conquer a, um, um, a, a town, a city, and he took his uh, special forces, the strongest soldiers, and went and he saw that the city was surrounded with a very high and thick wall. And he tried to, to break the wall and, and, and brought all of his uh, uh, special soldiers, whatever, and they all been killed on that, war, on that wall. So the king went back to his city to his camp and brought another unit more units of soldiers and they came and all the soldiers died on that wall and they kind of scratched the wall they broke broke parts of the wall but they all died and he came back and took the lowest level of, of soldiers the weakest ones of them all but he tried he had to conquer that that city and again all the soldiers died on that wall and the king didn't know what to do because he didn't have no more troopers, no more soldiers to take and he had to conquer that city. But he saw that the, uh, the, the, the earlier um, soldiers, the soldiers that were fighting earlier, damaged the wall. Even though they died on that wall, they damaged the strength uh, of that wall in a, in a very harsh way. And he saw that there is a way to win that war um, and he went back to his camp and took the women 
and children and the elders that couldn't participate in the war and with them he came back and they won the war and it's by the merit of the soldiers that fought and 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 broke the wall but in reality those ones who conquered the city was the weak ones was the women and children those ones that you wouldn't think to yourself that are able to win so today we're looking at ourselves and we're seeing ourselves we are weak we cannot compare ourselves to a generation of two thousand years ago or seven hundred years ago we're lost and confused and we don't know and we're carrying traumas from earlier generations and we're all like so shaky and weak and, 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 and barely functioning but it doesn't mean that the staff of God is not in our hand it doesn't mean that we don't have the key for the salvation and the fact that we do have the key for the salvation does not mean that it's because of our greatness or our merit it might be also by the merit of our ancestors and those ones who brought us to the final line but in reality every single person has his role and his position and his part in the completion of redemption and everyone should develop that self-awareness to his powers and to his talents and to his skills and abilities that he been blessed with and to use them for that noble cause to heal the world and to rush the redemption and to make it happen in our days very beautiful very evocative the things that you're saying um i really have two things of like a to use my own words a, cir a kind of circuit receiving the more clear we are the more real we are the more we're able to receive from hashem and connect to hashem and then see what happens in the world i hear you saying that action that it doesn't matter what we are or how we are because it's where we are and who we are that makes all the difference and now we're in the stage of Nachshan Ben Amin Adav to do that final piece um, which I completely agree with and then um, so my two questions are I mean if I'm understanding that correctly number one what else is the work that you see the two questions are really connected what else is the work that you see that we as the Nachshan of our times are meant to do and the other question is, I'm just curious, uh, I hope I can ask this in a, in a particular way, but I'm curious where your mind, like what brought you to, um, you obviously feel very, very deeply about this, like you're very grounded in what you're saying, very clear in what you're saying. What is it that you're seeing or perceiving or what have you experienced yourself or are you experiencing that is bringing you to this particular kav in the in the way that you work and direct other people to work? Do you understand what I'm asking you? Yes. So first of all, to the first question, there is only one thing that a person should do, if you ask my opinion, of course, and it's to work on our own self-esteem, because we are a creation of the Creator. And he made us to be who we are and he treasured our greatest potential inside of us but it's something that we need to reveal to uncover we're not aware to the 100% of our power of our inner strength and the power and greatness of the gifts that we've been blessed with now the evil inclination the Yetzirah is working 24-7 on breaking our own image and our self-esteem. That's his main work. Always to push us to sadness and to despair, to give up and to lose our faith and to lose our hope. That's what he's doing with his criticism and by showing us the external world around us, always it looks like the grass of the neighbor is greener and that everyone are more successful than us everyone are learning more everyone are praying more everyone life flows better for them everyone makes more money everyone are happier everyone have more opportunities than ours more sources than we have all the time the Yetzirah means the external world that is blocking the heavenly light is showing to us evidence and 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 proofs for our failure and for our lack of power and the true believer he believes an inner faith 
in himself and by that in the Creator, that the Creator is with him, that the Creator, he loves you. Now, every person, that's what he needs to do, is to find out really who he is, what his real mission is, what are the blessings and what are the talents that he's been blessed with. Now, there is a very hard challenge in this aspect because the Yetzirah is putting all his effort to break your self-esteem. So against all his work and his gigantic, you need to work very, very hard to find yourself. Now, really to find yourself is not a hard thing because you know exactly which chocolate bars you like and you know exactly which shows you like to watch and you know exactly which music you like to hear you know exactly which are the friends that you enjoy their company and which are taking from your power you know exactly where you want to live and where is the place that takes and drains your power you know the truth about your being the problem is not to know who you are you know if you like to play basketball or that you like to learn a page of Gemara you know it the problem is not to know who you are the problem is to believe that the one that you are is good and worthy and charming and beautiful and amazing and inspiring in reality the problem is only the low self-esteem and not who you are because in life you can be seen as a failure to many people many people can think that you're a failure but also Moses looked as a failure to many people many righteous people looked as a failure to many others it doesn't mean that that's the truth the truth is only what that the real honest person knows about himself and the Creator knows about himself if you know that you are an honest person if you know that you are dedicated to the truth if you know that you are doing the best that you can you must follow that and to rise your self-esteem and to go all the way with no end and not to care about whatever people say whatever people think whatever people talks whatever people do around you you should mind your own business and carve your own way for redemption. That's the answer for the first question. And I have another small thing to say about it, that I heard a fantastic story about a person that was blaming and chasing himself for loving basketball badly. Like he was a basketball fan, he liked basketball and he played basketball all of his life. And he was also religious and he was also observant and doing the best that he can. But you know, life doesn't always open the, the gates for, for learning and for prayers and for whatever. And he didn't learn so much and he didn't pray so much. He was just kind of holding his kippah on his head and eating kosher. One thing was holding him all of his life was that he was playing basketball and all, every like, like twice a week or whatever he would go and play with kids and with people and, like, and, and playing basketball, that was his hobby. And in one of the nights he felt very bad with himself. He told himself like you're wasting your life like all day long you're thinking basketball, you're eating basketball, you're drinking basketball, you're playing basketball. All, like, you're wasting your life what are you doing and a couple of days later um, he, he he finished one of his games with like not so happy because of him wasting his life playing basketball but he saw a young guy that sat on the bench and refused to go home like after the after they played after the game and he sat and talked to him and he realized that his background was the answer to that young guy needs. That young guy was in a very critical situation in his life. He was very lost and confused. And he sat with him and talked to him about faith and strengthened him and gave him very positive advice and really helped him. And that guy came to him a few weeks later and told him, I want to tell you that you really, like, you saved my life. You gave me a lot of strength. I was very, very lost and I I wasn't sure if I'm continuing or I'm taking my life in my hands like I was about to go I was about to give up and you gave me power and then he came to that realization that guy that we spoke about that the only reason that that guy was able to count on him and to take his opinion was because that they were playing basketball together 
for a long, long time. The trust that was built between them, the friendship, was based only on basketball, not in, on his religious background or, or religion knowledge that he had, only based on the sweat and the tears and the effort that they put as a team playing basketball into the night. And he realized that that was a tool that had been given to him by the Creator to give life and advice to that young guy that needed him. Sometimes we judge ourselves based on our image, on our bodies, on our, on our exile, on our physical life in this world, in this lifetime. But in reality, that's not where you're holding. Where you're holding is where your soul is holding. You might be a soldier behind the lines of the enemy and you will look very filthy and your uniform will be torn and you will look like hell and you'll feel like hell and you'll be separated from your family and you'll be lost and confused and you're broken, you don't have money and you're scarred and wounded but you're winning the war and you are winning the war now it cannot be seen like if you look at the mirror you look like hell you look like a hungry dog but in reality you are the first soldier a special soldier that is defeating the enemy in the first line. That's the answer for the quest first question. Okay. You still want to hear the second one? Yeah, absolutely. Might be, absolutely. Might be even scarier than the first one. Okay. okay. So, I'll tell you. Okay, I'll, I'll say something. Okay. I'll say something first. The first, <laughs> I... When I found you on Facebook somehow, I, somebody must have shared something from a group that you were speaking in or something. We have and many good friends that are doing yeah. that job, thank, thank heaven. Yeah, yeah, I see some of them commenting on Facebook Live now. So, um, you were, this, you were, if there was one thing that I saw you doing then, or, and felt you doing, was you were validating the humanity and the self-love of every person, which was very compelling and I, I agree with you. What you're saying has very strong resonance of truth and um, I'm seeing some comments like that also from listeners. But, the, so just I'm just repeating the question maybe in the same words or similar or maybe different words, but what is it that happened to you or that you now experience or that you have managed to connect to that gives you so much conviction in, in a world where as you say, we should be ignoring all of those other voices and, uh, and the inner judgment and so on, but in a world where there are so many um, forces that encourage every person to be better, quote unquote, better, different, work harder, try harder, or, you know, don't think too much of yourself. Even when, even in the firm world, I mean, I've been thinking about this for a long time in the Torah world, there's a certain percentage of the population that, that every time something happens that's negative, they're like, we have to do chuba, we have to feel, we have to repent, God's angry at us, which is so toxic and so um, detrimental, but yet it's a very strong band. So, uh, sorry if I'm making the question too long, and maybe it's just the same as it was, but it's, what is it that you're holding onto, or connected to, or experienced, or learned, that keeps you so rooted in this particular thing, which is against the flow? So, first of all, I, I, I must say that if you ask me so that I can answer my opinion and there might be another answer, a heavenly answer, like it might be that I am someone that from heaven been chosen to go in that path and I don't even know who I am completely and I don't really understand what am I doing even all the way. But sure, from, that's true for you and everyone. But from my perspective, if you're asking me, so I must say that few things in life really uh, built my faith and gave me the strength. And first of all, inside of me there, there was, and that's the beginning of my journey to connect myself to, to the truth, and it was the desire for truth. As a secular person, I, 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 like, I suddenly realize that I'm lying to myself, that I am, I'm not being honest. Like my friends are telling me, hey, let's go do something, and I'm like, okay, let's, and like, I don't want to do that, but I am. And, and when I realized that, it was very painful for me to understand how surrounded I am with lies and with fears. 
Wow. And and that was the beginning of my journey. I didn't look for God. If He would offer me to be religious, I would reject it happily in two hands. And and until today, like my wife told me a few years ago, um, like let's say five years ago, um, she told me you are all like we're already 15 years in tshuva, but you still have not become religious. And I'm not religious. Like, if you ask me, I look religious, I keep Shabbat, we eat kosher, like everything by the book, but I'm not religious. Maybe I look religious, but I'm not. Like, I am who I am. I'm Jewish, and I believe in the Torah. And I keep everything that I'm able to from the rules of the Torah and 613 mitzvot midoraita and all the mitzvot midrabanan. I'm very strict and very observant in many, 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 many ways. And I'm still not considering myself as a religious person. I'm not a religion man. I am a, in, I'm, I'm, I'm like a culture. The fact that I'm Jewish, maybe it gave me something, but it's not what I'm teaching. I'm not telling people keep Shabbat, be observant, do put filin. I never tell that to my students. That's not the topics I'm talking about ever, even though that that's what I do. I put filin Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam every morning. I'm going, I'm praying, I'm like everything I do, but with no doubt. But that's not my teaching. That's not what I believe that will bring redemption. What that solid my faith, what it gave me the strength is that seed of truth inside of me in the beginning, the desire, the truth. And in that journey, very early, like really if I will think about it, so less than two months after I started my own tshuva process and finding the truth and seeking for the truth and not seeking for God, not seeking for no spirituality, just like trying to figure out with myself why are you why are you cheating yourself? Why are you betraying yourself? Why are you not being who you are? And I started to seek for my true identity and to stand up for myself and to and to be who I am, to start investigating topics that I was interested in and like started to walk into myself very fast after it, like a couple of months later and not more than that, I met my wife in the army and we were serving in the same unit in the same in the same building in the army and our conversation and um, that thank god never stopped until today and um, i don't i don't know if there is a couple that spoke so much like we i'm not i i'll be surprised to hear that there were like we're talking forever like we're always talking and we're always seeking for the truth and with no end and that is the secret of of our journey that we never stop desiring the truth and confronting it and the love and compassion and and goodwill that we have to good souls to people to innocent people and to the creation is something that is the light, the candle to our path. And we're not backing off. We're just continuing with no end to do our work. And we're desiring it together. And we're discussing it. And we're talking about it. And Shlom Bayit, the peace in our house, is with no doubt the most important thing we have in our lives. Both of us, my wife and I, all the rest is so less important, all the rest, no matter what, except of being there for each other and being honest and truthful for each other. And by that, as a fruit of that effort, going and doing more good in the world and helping other people, there is, there is no much to say. I experienced myself as a person that was seeking for truth and for God and for Hashem and for the truth and, and, and for salvation, I experienced many uh, spiritual experiences during the something like 20 years of tshuva of, of mine. I had in the last couple of years many solid and very strong and very powerful visions when I was awake and, and, and I heard a very deep and solid 
inner voice and I saw visions and sights that opened my eyes to understand how the redemption will take place and all of them um, I, I said if once I said that if I will become one day a hidden righteous man so in that day there will be something different in me than all the rest of the hidden righteous people and it's that I'm not gonna hide anything so as as a person that is doing I'm always videoing and giving classes online and we have more than 2,000 videos on the social media outlets that you mentioned before so all those visions and all those sites are recorded and I explained them in detail uh, in the last two years so like to watch those class to, to repeat those classes now is impossible but there is much more to 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 seek and to look for and things that been clarified to me as as the truth um, are things that I have never backed off of I never went away from them things that we realized things that we understood so that's kind of our nature to follow our inner truth and not to back off no matter what happens and that's what we do that's who we are so why why um, you define yourself as spiritual not religious and you described yourself as extremely Torah observant so can you explain a little more about that what is religious I have a very you, what, I what, have, draw you, what drew you to the Torah that's what I'm asking you in the beginning of my search, a very important question was for me, what are you doing with your Judaism? Like, but you know you're Jewish, like what are you doing with it? And then I thought to myself, what's the difference between you to the Haredim, to Orthodox people? And I said that in basic trainings, when you finish in the army, you receive the Bible as a gift, the, the Chumash, the Torah. So I said to myself, okay, you have the Bible, and they have the Bible. That's the mutual thing between you and the religious world. They hold the Bible and you hold the Bible. You can read it and they are reading it for sure. And they have more books that I was not aware of. I didn't know what Mishnah is, what Gemara is. I, all those con that con concepts were foreign to me. I never kept Shabbat. I was eating in Yom Kippur. I, I was not eating kosher, nothing at all. And and then I said to myself, they are focusing in Torah learning and they have more books that probably comes out from that Bible and they're sitting and learning that topic. And you can also like touch it. So touch it. And then I decided as a soldier with my uh, bright blue Oakley sunglasses with no kippah to my head to read the Bible. And I was walking as a soldier reading the Bible from A to Z all the five books and all the 24 books of prophets and that's how I started my connection to Judaism as part of my inner search to find myself and I loved that book I like literally when I finished it I said it's the best book I ever read in my life and I just continued learning that topic because it's very interesting like I loved it but I have a very strong problem with religious people like with people, I have issues. People that are twisting holy scripts, people that are using the Bible and the Torah and the power that they received or that they're taking to use and to abuse and to control other people for their own selfish needs and desires, they're my enemies. Like, I'll fight them all the way. I'm not surrendering to people because of their titles, because they're being called rabbis or chief rabbis. I just literally, I'm not scared of no one. I'll fight everyone and I will bring out the truth. I'm not working for no one. I'm not representing no one. I'm an individual. I served in the army. I'm Jewish. I have my rights and, uh, and I'm doing my thing and I'm not afraid of no one and I'm not scared of no one and I'm just saying the truth as I found it and I see that this message is a life changing and and the lifeline to thousands on thousands of people we have tens of thousands or maybe even more maybe today even more 
of comments and emails of people that testified that the message and the content that we're create, providing is their life, life source, is their salvation, is the answer to all their fears, to all their challenges, and healed them and saved their marriages and lives and whatever. Like, so we're just continuing doing our job with no connection to, to the negativity of, of certain orthodox uh, communities that have issues of lack of confidence in heaven and in Hashem and too scared to lose their power and whatever. It's like, okay, people, like, you have yeah, many... I want to say that. It's yeah. people. It's not, it's not about orthodoxy. Right. It's just people. Yeah. People are people wherever you find yeah. them. Yeah. Exactly. Many people that are selfish and self-centered and not really able to, to understand more than their selfish needs as for now. And uh, the only problem is if they start hurting others, so then we need to protect ourselves from them. You understand? But as long as you just like, you don't want to listen to me, no problem. Like, they took me off from a certain very large website that, so okay, you don't want to listen to my words, it's okay. Like, I can understand it. I don't have a problem. I don't need to force myself. But, uh, but like, when you, I, I, yeah, as a person, I don't like people to overpower others, to try to control others. So when people are start going and talking nonsense, I just don't like it. But when people are being positive and minding their own business, I don't mind. You like to surfboard, you like to learn Gemara, like enjoy it, like whatever you want to do with your life. Like I'm good with it. I actually really relate to this attitude. Because you I like surfboarding? Like I, I, I like watching people do it. Okay. I can't say I'm up there myself. No, I don't. I, I have a, I, I have a, an aversion to people exerting control over other people. Yeah, it's a, it's a poison, and it's a poison that, uh, that is not new in this world. Also, in the of generation of Moses, it, it took place. Moses was confronting hundreds of chief rabbis of the largest of all the all the leaders of the nation except of him was were standing against him and telling that he's a fraud and that he's a liar so okay but he went and prayed to heaven and heaven spoke spoke its words you know and and revealed the truth so also in our days Hashem will reveal the truth and 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 will open the path for the real redemption to take place in our days Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I just want to say for the record, in case people are listening or are not that familiar with this, just, just to say that all human beings have these issues, all communities have these issues, and, and um, I, I, I am echoing my own opinion, which agrees with Rav Dor, Rav Dor in the sense that um, we need to be ourselves, and we need to know ourselves, we need to connect with ourselves, and we need to find God through ourselves, not only um, in teachings, although I am a teacher and I'm very, very committed to the teachings. Um, the, the Creator created us unique and different. Yeah. And that yeah. difference is never being, um, never, never being expressed in the, in, in the external way of life. Like everyone are putting tefillin, everyone are keeping Shabbat. So you cannot be unique in in your Shabbat, you like Shabbat, it's Shabbat, your Shabbat and my Shabbat, it's the same Shabbat, you keep Shabbat, wonderful, great, I keep Shabbat, wonderful, great, like, what will be the different? My mind, my intention, in my intention in Shabbat, uh, my Shabbat will be unique, in your intention you can be unique, so yes, the only yes. thing that, ma that, w that makes us who we are is that we're going to allow ourselves to choose which song to sing on the Shabbat table, or if to sing or not to sing, which book to learn, or if to learn or not to learn. All those things will, take, will bring us to, to, to our spiritual success if we will reveal the inner treasures that we've been blessed by the Creator with, not to, to lose and give up on our individuality, our inner beauty. Yeah, it's a very, very, very freeing um, energy. It's a very freeing place to stand where you're, where you can actually listen deeply and and receive and choose and, and move something very. It's very powerful. For that, it's um, written on the redemption day that Hashem is saying, "V'karati lachem I'll set you free. I call you 
to, to be free, to be free sparrows, like to go and, and just to be free from, from every fear, from, from every kind of control. Just be yourself and be free. It's also just a, it's a very straightforward way of describing something that's really very deep, which is that if we get to the core of who we are, or even get in deep to who we are, what we desire is good. It's good. It's, and it's beautiful. You are so your soul. You're not your body. Your body is the vehicle that holds your soul. And your soul is a godly soul. Chelek Eloka Mimal is a portion of heaven from above. And therefore, there's no problem with you expressing the light of your soul because it's godly. It's Hashem Himself's light right. shining through you. Yes. Can't be better than that. So there are some there's some questions that if we still have some more time, I'd like to I'd like to ask a few of those. And but first, I want to ask you one of the things that I guess attracted me when I heard you on Facebook in the beginning was that you were speaking. You're making space for all people, not just Jewish people. You're clearly Jewish, right? Um, so, what is, in your opinion, the role? Is there a difference in the role of Jews and non-Jews in the redemption? Obviously, Jews have different mitzvahs in some cases than the non-Jews. I mean, how do you approach that? And also, a lot of people are struggling, as I'm sure you know even better than I, with feeling that they're disenchanted with the religions that they were brought up with, feeling that there's something Jewish about them or something that's drawing them to the Jews difference, or Judaism. There is a, They're out to make it. So, first of all, I want to fix something in what you said, if I may. Jewish is one tribe of the nation of Israel. Jewish are not a nation. Jewish are people, are a tribe. The nation of Israel is, if you want to talk about something, so let's talk about the nation of Israel. The nation okay. of Israel been divided to ten tribes and two tribes. Tribe of Yehuda and Binyamin and few of the Kohanim that joined them, the Levites, joined the nation of Yehuda under the kingship of King David. And they're the Jewish people until today that survived holding the Bible and being observant and keeping the tradition. The rest of the ten tribes went to the exile by the king of Ashur thousands of years ago after the first temple before the second one. And we haven't seen them since, but they're out there. They haven't been chased and killed for their Judaism. They just lost their religion. But you're talking about 10 huge tribes that today are in, out there. They are the nations. They are part of the nations. Part of the nations. And, and today, like the Jewish people, if we wouldn't have the Holocaust and all the rest of the prosecutions that we had until today, we would be a nation of something like 50 million people, 100 million people. If we wouldn't be killed for our Judaism, we would be something like 100 million people today. So, all the rest of the tribes, no one killed them for their religion. And therefore, you're talking about 10 times 100 million people that when the spirit of Mashiach and spirit of redemption will come back to the world and will blow away the negativity and the low self-esteem, they will come back to remember their real nature and who they are. Because they were not able to keep their religion because they've been exiled. And they are there being who they really are and, they're, and, and they just don't know who they are. Some of them, you have some people, some communities, some tribes, some, some like families that are claiming to have Israeli roots. You can see them in Africa, you can see them in China, you can see them in Afghanistan. You have many people that are claiming to Judaism. You see many cultures that are holding Jewish and Israeli uh, symbols like uh, stone altars and, uh, tri uh, and, King, and uh, the David's um, um, star and 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 Salomon, King Salomon's ring, and like many symbols that are being uh, uh, like re yeah. representing and showing evidence for their ancient connection to to Israelism, but in reality they are out there. Today they can be Christians. Today they can be Muslims. Today they can be Hindus. They can be whatever they are. How like that life took them to those places. They lost their identity, but it doesn't mean that they're not our brothers. It doesn't mean that they're not our siblings. And when the spirit of Mashiach will rise and will hover and will blow off the darkness from the world, suddenly you're going to be surrounded with something like billion of people, like hundreds and hundreds of millions of people 
that are equal to you spiritually. That you were sitting and eating together on the same table of Jacob and his four wives. And, and that's reality. So, Jewish people are Jewish people and it's fantastic and we are obligated to keep the Torah and the mitzvot. But the redemption, the third redemption, on it, it's been said, my house will be called the house of prayer to all nations. And like we're saying, will we'll, we'll come and bow in the temple of God in the holy mountain, in the holy city of Jerusalem, and we'll all know the name of Hashem, and we'll all call Him in His in name. So those ones that will have the merit to guide and to help others will guide and help others. And those ones that are just like too selfish and minding their own business, Hopefully we'll have the Mary to see that bright day of salvation, but the redemption will be the redemption for the deers, for the porcupines, for the uh, mountain goats, for the do dogs, for the sheep, for the fish in the sea and in the lakes. Like animals will not fight with each other, will not predators anymore, won't hate each other, won't ha like all death and all sorrow and all pain will disappear. The redemption is not Am Israel's redemption. The redemption is a whole wide world redemption. That nature will shift to a higher level of goodness. That only goodness will be revealed through nature. And the supervision of the Creator on the, His world will be clear and seen to all. And to that we desire. For that I'm working. And not for a Jewish salvation. That there is no Jewish salvation. There is a whole wide world redemption. So I, I agree with that. And we don't have to... Um, yeah, I agree with that. I just feel it's very, very important to um, give, to witness and to validate and to honor all that the, the Jewish people have have carried and endured and remained loyal to and spread and you know so but you're saying it because but you're saying it because you're Jewish and it's great that you will appreciate your ancestors and that you're going to remember the heroic story not just my ancestors I think there has to be some kind of payback for people who some kind of uh, some, something special for people who right. have done and it's a amazing. tremendous amount of work in elevating the world that's that's the, our gratitude uh, from our side the gratitude and appreciation to earlier generations for sure is important and needed the ones to give the one to give reward is the creator himself and the, I must say there are many amazing people in different nations as well that will be rewarded and and also that suffered and also that been killed like we're Jewish so we related we are related to the Jewish history it's okay it's great we're here teaching Torah also we're here sharing Torah well you may say we're not teaching Torah but we're talking about redemption let's put it that way and that is that is one of the core principles of the Torah I think, Although, that, re I think that redemption is a, is a concept that every every person in the world desires not only Torah learners everyone wants to live good life and not to be sick and not to lose their family members and and to see their children getting married and not dying in their da in their days and everyone that'd be good. yeah <laughs> that'd be a plus okay so uh, just let's um, go to uh, sorry if I'm looking to the side but I'm looking at a few screens here to get the questions so um, if we know this is from Smadar from Toronto if we know that God is here and we truly believe then why do we need to pray for redemption if God is here redemption is either here or unnecessary and I guess that's a question. Like we said in the beginning of this wonderful class, is that there, with, with, even though we know that the Creator wants us, uh, wants to redeem us and wants us his, uh, to be saved, He still wants it and it should come out from us. Mainly our prayers are to build ourselves and to strengthen our own self-esteem to go and to bring redemption. If we would go as, as a group of people to bring redemption, more and more people, we would bring it by nature. Without the salvation, without the spiritual interfering or, or spiritual salvation. It, like we have the power as humans, as people, to bring the redemption. Like if we will hold hands together and we're gonna put all our powers, the wise ones will put their wisdom, the loving ones will put their love, the rich ones will put their money, 
we're going to heal the world. We're going to find a cure for cancer in 24 hours. We're going to find an answer to the vaccinations issues in an hour. We, like, we, we're going to fix the, the, econ the world economic. Like, we're going to bring water to Africa. Like, we can do everything we want. The problem is that we're separated and disconnected. So we just need to work hard on reconnecting ourselves and investing our sources and just to hold hands together and to bring re uh, me I'm bringing redemption on my own and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bring more people to help but I'm doing it as a person I'm, I'm like I believe in it as a believer as well but I'm not waiting for a salvation to come I'm recording videos because I believe that those videos are life savings not because I believe that Hashem will bring redemption if I'll make another video no, the video been seen by 1,000 people and their life been improved by watching that video. And when their life been improved, so they will be more positive and they will go and distribute that light that they enjoyed for me and light will expand in the world. And the redemption will come as a result of that. So that's why we need to do and to pray and to work hard to fix the world from our end. Nachshan ben Aminadoth, again. Yeah. Okay, so here's the next the next question um, from Donna from Elizabethton. She says, Shalom Aleichem, Rav Dora, as, as your pupil, I've been your pupil, I'd like to ask if the, I'm not sure I understand the question, but maybe you will. I would like to ask if the inner faith, the wave that is stronger than the ebbs, can you explain the wave emanating? Is this something that comes from your classes or do you understand what she's asking? Can you can you say? If it not, I can you? ask another question. I'll read it no, again. No, no, no. Try to try not okay. to read it. Try to explain to me what you're understanding because your English is much better than mine. No, I don't really understand it. So she's saying she's asking about the inner faith. Yes. The, in, in, maybe in the inner faith, faith. Maybe you've talked about something a wave and ebb, something going forward and then going back. So she's asking. Like up and downs in the life yeah, of a person. Yeah, that's how I'm. That's how I'm understanding it. She's asking if the wave is stronger than the than the ebb, if the going up and forward is stronger than the backwards, and can you explain the wave emanating? Okay, so the wave of faith. I think the wave of inner faith. So it's on. It the, the answer is yes, but only it, like it depends in in if you're continuing or not, because your success depends in the power of your will. When you give up. You might give it up in the last wave, like when you're very close to shore. If you will give up, you're going to drown. You will be pulled back into the sea, into the depths of the water. But if you will not back off and you will keep on pu pushing and, and swimming and carving your way, you'll make it. And then you will use the power of the wave and you are not going to be drifted back. So it's not the nature of the world, it's the nature of our spirit that will set our destiny. We need to go all the way and to desire the truth with no end. And even until that moment that we feel that waves are choking us and we're swallowing water, we need to cough and to continue walking and marching to Zion. Yeah, I actually really love what you said in the beginning about Nachshan, the idea that, um, that as we go through a challenge, often it feels like we're getting farther and farther and farther from what we want, but actually we're just getting to the point where things start to split open. You just need to, you, we just need to continue and that's, that's it. There's no, nothing more. This morning oh. I was very close to, to give up on a certain thing and I asked my wife, so what should we do? So she said, we need to continue. <laughs> yes, continue. One time I tell her we need to continue and one time she tells me we need to continue and, and that's how you continue. And I, now I'm taking that power that she gave me and I'm telling you guys to continue and, and we're continuing. <laughs> nice, yes. Okay, uh, next question. In breaking our self-esteem, this is from Jamie and Elena. In breaking our self-esteem, when, when we relegate or say of our weakness, the darkness in us that we're only human, doesn't saying we're only human obscure our light? Yes, it's true that we have those weaknesses, but aren't we more? Did you understand that one or should I rephrase it? Rephrase it. Okay, so she's relating, I think, to the idea that you started with that everything comes down to self-esteem. So she's saying, she's, I think she's saying that when a person is moving towards self-esteem, it's easy for them to say, I'm only human, 
you know, be easy on be to be easy on ourselves, but about anything that we find in ourselves that's dark or that's in a way. So she's asking if we if we keep saying I'm only human, it's okay. Are we not? Uh, selling ourselves short are we not covering our light or our potential that's deeper than I don't, that, I, I, the human level I, well, I never say I'm only human I like I, I don't understand what does it mean I'm only human if I'm human it means that my abilities and capabilities are are beyond my reach like if really I'm human like so it's so I'm able to fly like the Levi's that were flying holding the holy ark and I'm able to open the Red Sea like the Red Sea been open to Moses and his people and I'm able to rise in fire flaming chariot of horses like Elijah the prophet and to open the Jordan River and I can build the temple like King Solomon if I'm only human so I can my my wife's candles can be lit from one Friday to the next and her chalot will be warm like the chalot in Beit HaMikdash uh, for like six, seven days of the week, so if I'm only human, so I'm I'm fine with that. I I don't see no lacking in being only human. Humans are higher than angels. Angels are scared of human. We are able to go into the fire like Abraham and not to be burned to the lion den like Daniel and not to be eaten. So, yes, we're human beautiful creation that scares the angels away. It's a very compelling vision of humanity. Um, I have a question about it, but first I want to say sorry, Jamie. Jamie is a guy, I said she. So thanks for letting me know. Um, it, so this only human thing, yes, if we, if, it would be fantastic for us to actually, uh, I wish I had that in writing actually, that was very beautiful. Maybe you have it somewhere in writing that you can share with me and I'll post it. I'll up. tell you, it's written. What's the difference between humans to animals? It's the Tselem Elohim, it's the shape of God. Now, God does not have a shape. He doesn't have a body, so he cannot have a shape. So, which shape it's about? It's about the soul. The soul that we have is divine and higher and special than animals. That they have a certain spirit, but we have a soul. We have a godly portion, like something purer than a regular spirit. Our electricity, our energy is coming from a higher source. So, if that's what makes us human, and that's our godly portion that makes us human, so it means that humanity is godliness. So, by saying, I'm human, you said, I am godly. Moshe Ish HaElokim. Moshe was the man of God. Means that a man is godly. So I'm a man. No problem. It's a really nice mission statement. Do, do you have something in? Do you have something in writing, by the way, that just with with all of those events? I'll contact like you with my. Or? I'll contact you with my assistant that is much more aware to our content than okay, me. I'm good. more into bringing the next bucket of water to the screen. It's just very beautiful. It's very beautiful. Beautiful examples from the Torah of what it really means to be uh, an inspired human. Thank you. Okay. Mainly our mainly our content is on uh, like on on our website. Everything is on our website, but on the Facebook and on YouTube, you can search and. We have like around 2,000 long complete classes of one hour each and many more short clips that are talking about specific topics. And by searching in Google and r mentioning Rav Dror while searching it, you can find like tons of answers to very critical because we're trying in the description to, to put more and more details about the topics that the class is, is about. And when you search and you find the answers, if you add the word Rav Dror or something like that, so you'll find it in classes and it's very easy to search and to find today. Thank you, Heaven. Yeah, that's a, that's a good state. That's a good mission statement. It's very easy to search and find today. And yeah, Rabbi it. Google is one of the strongest rabbis that making a lot, a lot of souls in our days. With no doubt, Thank many so made tshuva because of him. Okay, I'm, I'm going to um, uh, thank you for thank you for all of this, and I want to end with one question, and maybe you've already answered it, but you can highlight that answer if so. So, when, you look, when we look at the human experience, the way that we normally think of ourselves or experience our lives, pretty common to most of us, and then we look at the image that you just 
you just evoked, which is a completely accurate of what it actually means to be human and, and what some humans have, have achieved through their connecting to that deeper level, that godly level. So what, where do you think it, it is the shift between the ordinary human experience and this transcended human experience or this Kiula human experience? And is that just self-esteem or is it, would you say something else to it? Would you add something to it? When the amount of strong people that are pulling to the same direction will be powerful enough, the door will be open and we will see a change in the nature of the world that the nature of the world will change corresponding to the godly will. Until then, we need to push um, in darkness. But in that moment that the time of exile will finish and enough people will pull to the light, a beam of light will, will hit the, 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 the sky and will start to shine the world with the light of redemption. So it's a matter of time an effort from our end and you can never know when it do you know when Shabbat enters no you know what's written in the in 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 like you can find like what's written in in your uh, in, in your um, calendar but you don't know when really Shabbat enters no one can put his finger on that it's above time so we're pulling and we have a certain time limit that we understand but it can happen now and it can happen now well said. <laughs> thank you so much. I really thank you appreciate so much. it. Thank and thank you all the listeners and, and, and viewers that are with us and with you and with me and with us. And, um, and that's it. And may the Creator answer to all of our inner desires and holy prayers in no time and will bring us to that place above all kinds of limitations to experience Amen. only joy and satisfaction. Amen. Okay, hear what's up. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Take Be care. well. Until next time. Thank you. Bye, everybody. By the way, just just reminding everybody, we have a second call today. Sorry, you go to Schneider at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Rathor. That's great. Thank you. The world is not existing because Olam Milchon Elev. The world is just blocking the light of truth. The world calls Alma de Shika, world of light. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. We're just inside of an illusion.